This video is about solving systems of equations via graphing. If you watched the video where that was the introduction, you will remember that really didn't talk about what a systems of equations really is. So this video will actually accomplish two things. One, telling you how to solve them using graphing. And the other thing is, what the heck is a systems of equations? Let's get to it. Let's review these key concepts real quick. First of all, let's remember what is a solution? A solution is any value which makes an algebraic sentence true. How is a point a solution for a line? Well, the coordinates of that point represent all the little ordered pairs on the line if you graph it. So that means that's the solution. Now to the crux of the matter for us. How is a point a solution for a system of equation? Well, that point is a solution because that one point will be on every single line. In other words, it's going to be where those points intersect. It's going to be where those two lines uh, cross. And you'll see that when we talk about these steps for how to solve via graphing. Here's the three steps, you know, in the short, quick summary of how to solve a system of equations using the graphing method. First thing you want to do is you want to graph all the equations in that system on the same set of axes. Let me show you what a system of equations looks like just so this will make more sense. Here we go. Notice we've got two equations here and this is why it's called a system of equations. This represents one problem but it's got two equations in it. And in order to solve it we're trying to find a solution that works for both of these equations. So whatever our answer is, our solution will work for this equation and it will also work for that equation. We'll see how that works in a moment. Here's the steps. If we're going to use the graphing method, what we have to do is take one set of axes and put all the equations on one set of axes. Don't put two different graphs, put them on one graph. The reason for that is we're looking for the coordinates where the two lines cross because if there is a solution the lines will cross sometimes though the lines won't cross if they don't cross because they're parallel lines then your system has no solution but most of the time for what we do in class it seems they usually do intersect but be aware there's always that one that gets thrown in there just to try to trick you up to make sure you're thinking after you've got the coordinates of that point where they cross you do need to go back and check it. So many students think, okay, I'm done. But let's make sure. Because even when I was preparing these videos, this is about take number five because I keep finding errors in my work. Because when I go back to check it, realize, oops, this doesn't work. So make sure you put it back into the equation to check it out. One little note. Sometimes you may find that you have to put your equation in slope intercept form first where y equals mx plus b so you can do the graphing. Just remember that as we go along. Let's do an example. Let's do this first one. y equals negative 2x minus 2. y equals 3x minus 7. Lucky for us, both of these are already in slope intercept form. So you can get out your graph paper, get your ruler, make nice straight axes, graph these two things using the slope intercept form. The y intercept is negative 2. The slope is negative 2, so we go down 2 over 1, connect the two points. Same thing for this one. The y-intercept is negative 7, the slope is 3 over 1, so I go up 3 over 1, connect the two lines, find out where they cross. If you want to use a graphing utility or a graphing calculator, that works too. I'm going to use my graphing utility here. I've cleared my axis. My first equation is minus 2x minus 2. There's what that graph looks like. And then my other equation is 3x minus 7. There's where it is. And then I go down here to where they cross. And it's kind of hard to get the exact coordinates. You can see down at the bottom of my screen where it's trying to make them. But uh, it looks like that's 1, negative 4, the coordinates for that point. And let's go back to our 
problem and see if that indeed works. 1, negative 4. If I put the 1 in for x and the negative 4 for y, let's see if it works with this first equation. 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is indeed negative 4. So it worked for the first one. Got to make sure it works for the second one too though, because it's got to work for them all. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Y is supposed to be negative 4, so ha ha, it does work for both of them. Are there any questions? Okay. If there are, rewind this video and look at it again. If not, I want you to push pause and I want you to do this problem yourself. Here's your system of equations. Graph it on graph paper, graph in utility, graph in calculator, I don't care. Just graph it. Alright, welcome back. Let's see how it looks. Let's clear our screen and put in our equations. 4x minus 10. There's the line. And x minus 4. There's the line. And it looks like it crosses at 2, 2. It's kind of hard to get my cursor right on there. But I'm going to guess that that's 2, 2. And let's go back and check. If I put in 2 for x, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 2 is negative 2. Y is supposed to be negative 2, so it works for the first one. Let's look at the second one. Put in 2 for x. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Y is equal to negative 2. So it worked. Okay, great, wonderful. Did you get it right? I hope so. If you didn't, you have another opportunity right here to get this one right. Here's your system of equations. Now notice, these are not in slope-intercept form. You need to put these in slope-intercept form by solving for y. So push pause, put these in slope-intercept form. All right, did you really do it? If you did, here's what you would have gotten. The first one, you would have gotten y equals the opposite of x, or negative x, if you prefer, minus 4. The second one, you would have gotten y equals 4x plus 1. Now, you may have gotten y equals negative 4x minus 1, but you've got to be careful. Look over here. See that minus sign in front of the y? That's like having a minus 1 in front of there. So you had to change the sign of everything when you go through the process. Okay, So make sure you got that right. Now, push pause again, and I want you to solve this, and then come back and check your answer. Let's see what you should have gotten. Let's go back. Let's clear our screen. Let's put in our equations. The opposite of x minus 4. And then the other one was 4x. Oops. What was that other one? I've forgotten it already. 4x plus 1. All right. 4x plus 1. And let's see where these babies cross. It looks like they cross at negative 1, negative 3. So let's go back and see if that's the case. If I put in negative 1 for my x, if I put in negative 3 up here, okay, be careful, these minus signs will always get you. This is saying we take the opposite of whatever x is. So the opposite of negative 1 is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. That worked. Okay, here. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Now, one of the things that I probably should have done is shown you those substitutions and work through this, but I've been having problems getting these videos to upload because it was saying my videos were too long. So, I'm going to have to trust that you're following the substitutions here. If not, go get some help from your mother. Um, 
but that is graphing to solve these systems of equations. Uh, if you have more questions, go back and look at these again. Take your time. Look through some of the examples in your book. Mommy might even be able to help you with this. If you don't have any questions, then push forward. And here's... What's going on here? There we go. Here's what I want you to do. Page 275, 7 through 19 odd. Now after you do these, you've got to check these. Go to the back of the book and check your answers. Because I need to know tonight if you're having trouble with this so we can get more practice tomorrow instead of moving on. If at any time you don't understand anything that's going on here, just email me. And when I'm on my planning period, which would be about uh, 12 o'clock, I can give you a call during my planning period. Okay? Uh, so anyhow, there's the work. I want you to give it a shot. Go for it. Um, I think you'll do well.